Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is the conductive segment. Okay, so the conductive segment is really the action potential. So this is where the information is going to travel down the axon of the neuron. Okay, so if you look at my little axon here, hopefully you can see I have sodium voltage-gated channels, so salted sodium VGCs, okay, and I have potassium VGCs. Okay, for the sake of making it easy to see, I always draw the sodium on one side and the potassium on the other side. In the real world, they are intermixed. Okay, so there's sodium voltage-gated channels all over the axon, and there are potassium voltage-gated channels all over the axon. Okay, so when we hit negative 55, so that's our magic number, that's our threshold. When we hit negative 55, okay, so when we hit that, that's the signal for the voltage-gated channels to open. Okay, so that's the magic number. Okay, so what's going to happen is the sodium is going to enter the cell. Okay, that's going to make the inside of the cell more positive. Okay, that's called depolarization. Okay, when it becomes more positive, we're depolarizing. Okay, now around zero millivolts, okay, so as we add enough sodiums in that we hit zero, the sodium voltage-gated channels close and sodium stops entering the cells. Okay, potassium voltage-gate, potassium is going to start leaving the cells and that's going to bring the charge inside back to negative 70. Okay, and that is repolarization. I can't get my middle mouse to work. So that's negative 70 and that's repolarization. Okay, so the idea behind this is the sodium voltage gated channels and the potassium voltage gated channels are opening at the same time. Okay, the sodium ones open really fast and let the sodium in quickly. The potassium ones are slower to open. Okay, so it's going to cause a change inside the axon, a change in the charge. Okay, so we're going to go up to zero. Okay, then the potassium is going to start leaving and then we're going to come back down to negative 70. Okay, so that's depolarization and repolarization. It occurs all along the axon and that's the action potential. Okay, now I have this little picture to try to um, explain to you what's going on, how you can see the ions changing and how the the graphs are changing, how the charge is changing inside. So let me find a pen. Okay, so here's we're at resting membrane potential is number one. Okay, so we're at RMP. Okay, so the sodium voltage gated channel and the potassium voltage gated channels are closed. Okay, so there's lots of but lots of potassium inside the cell and more sodium outside the cell. Okay, when we hit negative 55, okay, so we hit negative 55, which is the threshold, okay, so that's what we call, that we call that number the threshold. So when we hit the threshold, okay, the sodium voltage-gated channels and the potassium voltage-gated channels open. The sodium ones open faster, so sodium rushes in, brushes down its concentration gradient and into the cell. When those positive sodium ions come in, they make the inside of the cell more positive, and that's depolarization. Okay, once we hit about zero or negative 50, or positive 35, the sodium voltage gated channels close. So if you look at number three, these guys are closed. No sodium's going anywhere. Okay, but the potassium ones are open all the way now. So potassium is going to leave the cell, so it exits the cell, and it's going to make the inside of the cell more negative because the positive charges are leaving. Okay, and that's called repolarization. Okay, so sodium is entering the cell. When we depolarize, potassium is exiting the cell when we repolarize, and I have that on the next slide. Okay, so... Here's a graph of the action potential. Okay, so it, it graphs the change in the charge in the millivolts during uh, the conduction of a neural impulse. Okay, so if we look here, so here's time on the x-axis and then millivolts on the y-axis.
Okay, so negative 70, we're resting. Okay, so we're hanging out. Inside's more negative than the outside. Okay, then we get the signal from some excitatory neurotransmitters. Okay, so they're building up more and more excitatory neurotransmitters. Okay, and then at the axon hillock, it gets summed. If we hit negative 55, that's the signal for the sodium and potassium voltage-gated channels on the axon to open. Okay, so they open. Sodium enters the cell. Boop. Okay, that's depolarization. Okay, so we're depolarizing. We hit this maximum point of positive 35. That's as high as we go. Okay, the sodium voltage-gated channels close. The potassium ones are all the way open, and the potassium starts to leave the cell. Okay, so potassium leaves the cell. When that happens, the charge inside the cell becomes more negative again, and we start to repolarize. Okay, so our goal when we're repolarizing is to get back to the resting membrane potentials, to get back to this negative 70. Okay, what happens is we actually, we overshoot it. <laughs> we go, woo, we go too far down, and that's called hyperpolarization. Okay, so we overshoot resting membrane potential. But eventually, everything equalizes, comes back together, we get back into homeostasis, and we're back at resting membrane potential. Okay, so the information has gone from down the neuron. Okay, so it's traveled down the neuron. Now I'm going to go back here. The way that these channels open, okay, they're opening as a result of the, as the millivolts, as a change. So when this hits negative 55, Okay, that's my fives. Negative 55, that's the signal for the first sodium voltage gated channel to open. Okay, and then they kind of open like, maybe like if you knock down dominoes. Okay, so the first one's going to cause the second one to open. The second one's going to cause the third one to open and so on, all down the line. So they open like dominoes because the charge is becoming negative 55 as we travel down the neuron. Okay, now... One of the things that occurs in myelinated neurons is called saltatory conduction. Okay, so saltatory conduction occurs on myelinated axons. Okay, so what happens is with the neurons that are myelinated, in the nodes, okay, in those neurofibril nodes, the sodium and the potassium voltage-gated channels are concentrated. So what happens is we have the action potential. It almost hops, okay? And that's what saltatory, saltatory means jump. Okay, so the action potential hops through here as fast as it can. So you got to get that. It's moving really fast through the places that are myelinated. Okay, so they say like a new action potential is generated at every node. So it just goes, it hops. And I think of it as like a video game where... Um, you hit a speed power boost button, okay, and it's going to go and send you through here as fast as you can to this point, and then send you through here to the next point, and send you through here to the next node. So it speeds up the transmission of the signal down the axon. Okay, if a, if a neuron isn't myelinated, it just, every channel has to open. In this case, it just kind of gives you a power boost from node to node. So this picture is supposed to show the red is supposed to be where we're, we're depolarizing. Okay, so we're depolarizing here, and then it hops to the next node. Okay, and then it hops to an, the next node. Okay, so after we depolarize, there is a little point in time where it's called a refractory period. A refractory period is where no matter what you do to it, you can't make it take a charge again. So it's like a rest stage before you can hit action potential again. Okay, now, the last part is called the transmissive segment. So the transmissive segment is at the end. Okay, so it's occurring at the synaptic, synaptic knob, knob. Okay, and they have presynaptic neuron. This is a picture from the old book, so let's just cross that out. So it's occurring in the synaptic bulb. Okay, so what's going to happen is the neurotransmitter is going to be released from the vesicle Okay, and it's going to cross the synaptic cleft, and it's going to bind to the post to the next neuron. Okay, I want to wait. 
Oh, well. Don't hit that little thing down there. Don't Because I don't know what that'll do. Okay, so in order for this to happen, the way it happens is these um, calcium voltage gated channels are going to open when we hit negative 55. Okay, so when the negative 55 charge, let's find my picture. When the negative 55 charge gets all the way down to the synaptic bulb, okay, so when it gets all the way down to the bulb, okay, that's the signal for the calcium voltage gated channels to open. Okay, so when they open, calcium's going to enter the cell. Bloop, so calcium comes into the cell. The calcium is actually going to be char attracted to the vesicles. Okay, so the vesicles, because of the plasma membrane, they're negatively charged. Okay, so they're, so they're attracted to the plasma membrane. Okay, now, that negatively charged plasma membrane, okay, is going to migrate to the negatively charged end of the synaptic bulb because that's made of plasma membrane. And it's going to cause the neurotransmitters to be exocytosed. Okay, and then they're going to cross the synaptic cleft and they're going to go, go into the, the neurotransmitters will go to the next neuron. Okay, so does that make any sense? So the calcium opens when we hit negative 55. The calcium voltage gated channels open. Calcium comes in. It's attracted to the negatively charged vesicles. Okay, then the vesicles are going to migrate to the end of the synaptic knob and the neurotransmitters will be exocytosed from the vesicles. Okay, now one of the things we mention here is that we also have calcium pumps. Okay, so calcium pumps are in here to remove the calcium from the inside of the cell. So that, that's all they're doing is they're in here, they're taking ca the calcium that's migrated in and they're pumping it back out. Okay, now I want you to remember that the neurotransmitter, when it's released, okay, it's going to cross the synaptic cleft. The places that the neurotransmitter can go to signal, it could go to another neuron, it could go to a muscle, or it could go to a gland and cause something to happen. Okay, now what happens to the neurotransmitters after they're released? Okay, so what happens is the neurotransmitters, they could diffuse into the extracellular fluid, okay, and they could go elsewhere in the tissue, okay. They could be taken back up, so we call that reuptake, okay. So they could be picked back up by the presynaptic neuron, okay, and once they get back into that presynaptic neuron, they may be broken down or they could be reused. One of the enzymes that breaks some down, it breaks down monoamines, is called monoamine oxidase. And I know some of you probably heard of that. Like if you um, if you look at a, some any like cold medicine that you have in the refrigerator or in the refrigerator in your cabinet, um, it'll say don't take if you've been taking monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Okay, so MAOIs. Okay, so mono, monoamine oxidase breaks down the um, neurotransmitters. Monoamine oxidase inhibitor would stop the breakdown of the neurotransmitter. Okay, so it could be used to um, treat depression. Um, sometimes the neurotransmitters are also broken down when they're in the synaptic cleft. Okay, so acetylcholine, we abbreviate ACH. Okay, that's a neurotransmitter. We'll have to talk about that when we come back from spring break, but acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter and there's an enzyme that breaks it down that's called acetylcholine es esterase. So acetylcholine esterase breaks down acetylcholine so that I can't keep stimulating the neuron. Okay, you want to get rid of it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I'm going to um, also post... Keep. Okay, I'm going to end this. Um, I'll also post some other links to videos that other people have done. Thanks.